Um, this webinar is dedicated uh, to the memory of uh, Dr. Charlie Rufinox, who unfortunately just passed away about 10 days ago. And he was a dear friend and colleague, and um, he'll be sorely missed. He passed away suddenly. Um, Charlie uh, received his dental degree from uh, the University of the Pacific. He practiced um, near San Francisco, and he was really dedicated to preserving healthy tooth structure, um, something the, the ABD is, is all about. Um, and he was a founding member of the ABD and our former secretary and, and board member. And we, I just wanted to say, we were grateful to have him as part of our lives and, and may his memory and legacy be a blessing. Uh, and we send our deepest condolences uh, to his family. So um, anyway, I'm, I'll miss you, Charlie. He's a great guy. But we're now going to start our, our um, webinar and we're very fortunate to have some great speakers um, with us, some of the best. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Sema Belli. She's coming to us from, from Turkey. And uh, Dr. Belli graduated from Amara University in Istanbul with her DDS and received her PhD in the Department of Operative Dentistry from Selkuk University in Konya, Turkey. She also studied at um, the Tokyo Medical and Dental University um, for several years as well. And she's done some seminal research on uh, fiber uh, restorations uh, for endodontically treated teeth. So she's gonna be um, happy to answer any of your questions regarding uh, fiber, regarding res restoration of endodontically treated teeth. So please feel free to uh, ask her questions uh, about anything related to that. And our second speaker and panel member is Dr. Ray Bertolotti, who really got me started on, on the journey of adhesive dentistry um, many years ago. And we're just so honored to have him as, our, as one of our panelists today. And Dr. Bertolotti received his DDS degree from the University of California in San Francisco after working as a PhD metallurgical and ceramic engineer at Sandia National Laboratories. And he's probably best known for introducing the total etch technique to, to, to North America in 1984. He also introduced Panavia in 1985, tin plating in 1989, self-etching primers in 1992, and Helozone in 2004. He also developed the sectional contact, contact matrix system Microprime G, the micro etcher for sandblast in, sandblasting, intraoral tin plating. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, I personally am very grateful to having studied with Ray for many years, and we're just very honored to have him as one of our panelists. And our last panelist today is Dr. Grant Chez, uh, who is a, a dear colleague and friend of, of mine. Um, he practices in Seattle, Washington. He earned his DDS degree from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, and he uh, did research for 3M for a number of years uh, on their Filtech Supreme product. And he has most recently worked with Dr. Ali Reza, Ali Reza Sadr at University of Washington and Dr. David Rudo doing research on uh, fiber uh, in restorations and underneath, underneath restorations in terms of what the effect of fiber is on the restoration and on the tooth substrate. Unfortunately, we were supposed to have Dr. Graham Milicic as one of our panelists, but uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, he is unable to join us today. So uh, we wish Graham well, and we will be in touch with him. So without further ado, um, we are gonna start our Q&A session. So my first question will be for Dr. Bertolotti, for Ray. I just wanted to ask Ray to discuss directed shrinkage, um, incremental buildup, of composite versus bulk fill composite as a start. So take it away, Dr. Bertolotti, please. This is an average prep. Uh, it's not easy to see with uh, his technology called OCT, optical, optical coherence tomography. So that's what the prep looks like. It looks like it's upside down here because of some, the way they do this. I don't understand why it has to be upside down. But in any event, now we injected in sonic fail. I call it sonic fail because it always <laughs> fails. Now, if this cooperates, 
Yeah, there it goes. There goes the sonic field into the prep. Okay. And after the sonic field is in place, we're going to light cure it. This is all speeded up so you don't have to wait too long. And see the line developed there? That's a, that's a gap at the pulpal floor, exactly as predicted. Okay. So now let's go to the next slide. And that is bulky Z. Good, there we go. There comes the bulky Z. Looking good, nice adaptation to the cavity. Now, they're waiting 90 seconds, okay, for full adaptation. But as I told you, really only have to wait for about 45. I don't want to tell you shorter than that because somebody will abuse it. Now, Ali's light curing for 90 seconds. Light curing is finished. And look, zero gap. And I'll tell you, the first guy that gave me a clue that this worked this well is Charlie Rufinacht. Because I gave some bulky Z to Charlie. And I said, try this, Charlie. This, this is a new uh, new development of ours. So he, he did a crown prep of some sort where it was part of a buildup. And he called me on the phone. He says, Ray, this stuff's awesome. He says, normally when I prep at 6X like this, I can see the white line between the, the composite and the tooth. This doesn't have a white line. This is the first ever I've ever seen. So keep keep the stuff in production and hit the mark. So that's how it'll evolve. But Dr. Satter, had, uh, I talked to him yesterday about this. And I don't know, he and, yeah. he and I and Dr. Rio kind of have supper a couple times a month. So we, uh, we're talking about dentistry all the time. But um, th there were two things. One is the chemistry of bulk easy would start to polymerize at the bonding agent. So it's basically bonding first, where when people talk about the uh, light cured composite curing towards the light, it doesn't really do that, but it cures first closest to the light. And then these materials all have shrinkage. So when you have shrinkage happening, if you're first bonded to the tooth, it's going to not form a gap. Uh, the shrinkage stress will still happen in the tooth. In, in the shrink, shrinkage stress is demonstrated with light cured materials, often by gaps forming. But with the bulk easy, bonding first at the bond interface means no gap. Now, one thing, this is unpublished, uh, Dr. Satter did find with Bulk Easy Plus is that it doesn't seem to like, and this is this is unpublished, and he would want to be doing more more follow-ups to confirm this, but it wasn't bonding to universal bond bonding agents. So using a two-step system like SE um, Bond or SE Protect would be recommended to uh, to get that bond. Um, you know, the whole thing with bond is with our materials is a big deal, but there are ways to manage that. Managing the damage at the interface is a really important um, aspect of biomimetic dentistry and adhesive dentistry in general. Okay, thank you, Grant. For Dr. Belly, Sam, I, we have a question. Um, in terms of endodontically, restoring endodontically treated teeth using fiber, um, what is your technique in terms of where you place the ribond to, and what have you found in your research in terms of uh, having it placed optimally for reinforcing an endodontically treated tooth? Normally, I am from the Department of Restorative Dentistry. When we see a problem, we start to do research generally. And our problem in the Department of Endodontics was the weak cusps, which were broken later after root canal treatment. And uh, after root canal treatment, uh, the patients were coming back with a broken, uh, catastrophically broken teeth. That was uh, our a starting point. Uh, we said how we can save the tooth after root canal treatment. And uh, now, nowadays, uh, now from tomorrow, 
we will be endodontics meeting here. Uh, they are now saving tooth uh, and using very uh, minimal uh, access cavities. But in the past, uh, the, they were losing lots of tooth structure. So the starting point was that, and first we lined from uh, in uh, the middle of buccal cusp to the lingual cusp of molars and pyromolars. It was our starting point and it worked. Even uh, the uh, patient had uh, accidentally uh, bite something uh, strong. If there is a, a broken cusp, it was always repairable. Then we did the research part of this study. There are, of course, several techniques uh, to uh, use to uh, reduce the shrinkage stress. Uh, Dr. Tagami mentioned this topic very important. And many years ago, we also detected with uh, Dr. Inokoshi enamel cracks at approximate uh, area, uh, approximate enamel under the uh, 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 composite resin is a result of polymerization shrinkage. 